Are you tired of trying to manage your time and cramming as many tasks as possible into each day? Well, it's time to shift our focus from time management to something more important in today's world attention management. In this modern age, information is abundant and readily available. Our brains are bombarded with constant stimuli from media, social networks, and the internet as a whole. With all this information vying for our attention, it's no wonder that attention has become the most valuable and scarce resource unlike time, which is equally distributed to everyone, attention is limited. We can only truly focus on one task at a time. Multitasking may seem impressive, but it actually comes with a high switching cost. So while you're reading this script right now, you're giving your full attention to it. And that's a valuable commodity. Economics has taught us that anything scarce holds value. And in today's world, attention is becoming the currency of the attention economy. Soon enough, why? I'll find yourself paying attention to those who capture it effectively. But here's the thing, it's not about how you manage your time or schedule. It's about where you choose to direct your mental energy. The self-help books of the past, with their time management techniques, no longer suffice in this attention-driven world. I learned this the hard way when I felt overwhelmed juggling multiple remote jobs, writing and personal projects, I tried to allocate my time efficiently, but I soon realized it. T attention allocation matters more. I discovered a few key lessons along the way. One, focus on a task means returning to it every 48 hours. If it takes longer, it's not in the focus zone. Point two, limit yourself to a maximum of two different tasks per day. The constant switching between tasks exhausts you more than the work itself. Point three, reserve the work week for work and focus on personal projects during your free time, like weekends and holidays. Point four, Embrace your natural creativity peaks, if you're a morning pay. R-S-O-N. Tackle creative tasks early in the day. Point five, stillness breeds focus. Push yourself to spend just five more minutes on an activity than usual. Creating a sense of stillness that leads to high-quality focus, in a world filled with information overload, the ability to deeply focus on a task has become a superpower. Not many people possess this skill, but those who do achieve high-quality results in productivity, so, Here's a challenge for you. Let's dedicate the year 2020 to mastering the vital skill of attention management. Focus on what truly matters and limit yourself to a maximum of four projects at a time. Less is more when it comes to deep focus and productivity. Trust me, you'll thank yourself later. Start your journey towards becoming an attention master and watch your productivity soar. What's the difference between a consumer and a producer? Some people have never given it much thought or even know what it means and why it matters. How would one or the other make any difference in how we live our lives or how it affects the world we live in? It's more important than you may think. Depending on whether you're in a consumer or producer mindset, your life could look very different. Which mindset are you to understand how we think and how it could affect the way we do things? We first T need to know what characteristics and qualities define each one. A consumer generally sees an endless stream of content to consume or items to buy. They tend to spend their time and money on distractions of some form, like entertainment to escape from daily life. They may also adhere too rigidly to current trends and fads. Distractions can include things like vacations, gadgets, and technology, shopping for things you don't really need, having a big TV package, gambling, or in extreme cases, pa, are taking in drugs and alcohol. While some things can be destructive and dangerous, many distractions are just things that use money as a resource to entertain yourself. Fads that promise a quick fix, like get-rich-quick schemes and fad diets, or the latest trends that everybody just has to have, can use up your money and leave you feeling unfulfilled and disappointed. Not to mention acquiring debt with few long-term benefits, consumers generally use the money they get from working at a job. They use W. Hat they earn, and they work to get more. And the cycle repeats. If they're lucky, they work at a job they enjoy. But many don't. Often the work is just a means of getting more money for more entertainment or paying bills. Consumers put a different emphasis on value than producers. A lot of the things that consumers pay money for are things to feel good at the moment. They aren't usually looking ahead at how this could play out in the long run, and aren't necessarily concerned about how it all fits. NTO a bigger plan. It's a live-in-the-moment kind of lifestyle, on the other hand, Producers tend to think of money as a resource to help them accomplish their goals. They look at spending as an investment, either financially, personally, or as an investment in someone else. Producers use the concept that it takes money to make money to increase their income. Things like real estate are examples of investing in something that can have a return payout in the long run. Producers are patient. They know that it can take time to build revenue. 
so they don't have much interest in get-rich-quick offers. Another investment producers make is in themselves. They spend money on things that will help them grow personally or professionally. They may read books, take classes, and learn new skills. Producers know that learning and growing can make themselves more valuable in the future. They know that their health is another way to invest in themselves. If you take care of yourself, you may find you have more energy and interest in opportunities that come your way. You might not have to spend extra money on health treatments if you can avoid the problems that a lack of self-care can create in the first place. Buying healthy foods and purchasing a gym membership would seem like great investments to a producer. A good pair of gym shoes or equipment like a nice set of golf clubs would also make sense to someone who prioritizes their health. One more thing that producers do is invest in other people. This is not always for financial gain. Sometimes they may join a group that allows them to have networking opportunities or pay for a service to someone who has a particular skill or craft. The return in this case is that they receive quality work and save the time it would have taken them to do it themselves. Sometimes they give to other people because they believe that what that person is doing has a worthy cause. They are giving with the idea that their contribution helps out for the greater good. Of all, one main difference between consumers and producers is what they spend their money on. What is important to one person may be different for another. To be honest, we are all on a spectrum of being a consumer or a producer, some are all in on one side or the other, while others may have some attributes of both. I am not saying producers don't buy frivolously at times. Yes, they may take fancy vacations or have expensive cars or make poor decisions about their health and lifestyle. Consumers may have jobs they love and not mind living paycheck to paycheck or even own their own homes. It's not about being rigid about what to do with every penny you make or never missing a daily workout at the gym. There's no perfect way to be. But it's about thinking of what you want out of life and assessing whether or not you're on the path to achieve it. So why change to a producer mindset? What benefits might you find by changing the way you think about money, value, and your time? Well, let's talk fur. Saint about money. If you were using an investment mindset, you would be finding ways to increase the amount of money coming to you. Think of a boomerang that returns to you with dividends rather than a one-way flight where you can just wave goodbye to your hard-earned cash as it flies into the sunset. To be honest, most people believe they could use a little more cash at the end of each month. So, what if you could find a way to use your money to generate more money in return? Next, what do you value? If your health is important to you, would you change some of your eating or exercise habits? If having a few important, meaningful items instead of a lot of meaningless clutter is something you would care about, would you change your spending habits? Buy less, choose well is a sentiment expressed by fashion designer Vivian Westwood. By focusing your attention on what you spend money on, you might find that your possessions and activities have more meaning. The benefits of less clutter include e better clarity, composure, and less time tending to your stuff. As author Timber Hawkeye says about his minimalist lifestyle, if I don't own it, I don't have to dust it, which leads us to the subject of time. Time is probably the number one commodity on this planet. We all have a limited number of hours to use throughout our lives, so how do you want to spend them? What would you do if you had more time? Being a producer can take many forms and create self-fulfillment as well as prosperity. Learn. In new things and being the person you aspire to be are all good reasons for change. So, how do you make a change from a consumer to a producer mindset? Well, if you're asking yourself that question, you are already starting to change. Setting new goals and sticking with them is the next step. Look at how you see yourself as a producer. Invest in yourself. Learn a new skill. Take a new class. Plan a workout schedule. Eat healthy foods. Be creative and productive. Even making your bed in the morning. Ing or creating art can make you feel like you've done something. Talk to new people. Listen to new ideas. Contribute to your community. Change takes time. Remember, producers are patient but they set a goal and then work toward it every day, adopt a new attitude about how you spend your time and money. Remember, being a producer isn't about being a millionaire, although that can sometimes be a byproduct. It's about recognizing real value, living a life of curiosity, and having an interest in all th. Edit has to offer. It's about being part of the game, not just a spectator. American author and educator Anna Lapp said, every time you spend money, you're casting a vote for the kind of world you want. Wouldn't you rather create the world you want than distract yourself from getting there? Thank you for watching, and have an awesome week. If you found this video valuable, you can give a tip proportional to the value received. The link can be found in the description. One of the most life-changing moments in my life occurred during my college years. 
I was giving a presentation on a product that I had been developing for an entire semester. However, during my talk, the professor posed a question that caught me off guard. He asked, can we see the other concepts you worked on? I felt my face turn red as I realized that I didn't have any other concepts to show. I had invested all my time and effort into this one idea because I believed it was great. Unfortunately, the professor was less than impressed. As I walked out of the classroom later that day, I glanced down at the notes the professor had left for me on my assignment. In bold, red pen, he had written instructions that would fundamentally change how I approached my ideas. The note read, research the six thinking hats method. A six thinking hats is a system developed in the 1980s by the psychologist and inventor, Edward de Bono. It involves wearing different imaginary hats that represent different MI, ND sets, and emotions. By adopting these different perspectives, individuals can analyze and critique ideas from various angles, each with a unique focus, de Bono once said. The main difficulty of thinking is confusion. We try to do too much at once. Emotions, information, logic, hope, and creativity all crowd in on us. It is like juggling with too many balls. The Six Thinking Hats method addresses this issue by providing a structured approach to idea evaluation, originally designed to improve METI. In productivity, the Six Thinking Hats has been widely embraced by the creative community as a means to critically assess ideas. It allows individuals to be creative and bold within a safe space while also compelling them to be honest and realistic while this method can be used in group discussions. I personally find it invaluable to apply it to my own ideas. It's like having a personal team of consultants, each with their own expertise, but in this case, they're all residing within my mind, so. L. ETS dive into the six thinking hats one. The blue hat, also known as the management hat, sets the tone for the conversation. It defines the boundaries of the idea and helps summarize and draw conclusions at the end. Think of it as taking a step back and getting a holistic view of your concept. Point two, the white hat is all about collecting facts and data. It's the first hat you should wear after setting the outline. Use this hat to establish the basic concept and purpose of your idea. Identify its target, audience, and any gaps in your understanding of it. Point three, the yellow hat brings positivity and focuses on the value of your idea. What's great about it? What benefits does it bring? However, it's important to keep your enthusiasm in check and be realistic about the concept's true value. Point four, the red hat taps into emotions. How does your idea make you feel? What is your initial reaction? Now, shift your perspective and consider how a user would feel if they encountered your idea for the first time. This hat allows you to explore the emotional impact of your concept. Point five, it's time to be ruthless with the black hat. This is where you look for potential flaws and issues. Ask yourself, why wouldn't this idea work? By uncovering these drawbacks, you have the opportunity to address them and develop a stronger concept. However, be cautious about introducing this hat too early in the discussion, as it can hinder the emergence of positive ideas. Point six. Finally, we have the green hat. This is where you unleash your C. Creativity and brainstorm solutions. Armed with the knowledge gained from the previous hats, what can you improve? What new ideas emerge? Allow yourself to think outside the box and explore different possibilities. The day I learned about the six thinking hats was the day I learned a vital, albeit uncomfortable, lesson. Even if you're passionate about an idea, even if you've envisioned its success and invested significant time and effort into it, that idea may still have flaws or require refinement. Holding too tightly onto your original concept, driven by pride or ego, can blind you to potential improvements and opportunities. The Six Thinking Hats method has the power to transform your idea from mediocre to good, and from good to life-changing. It provides a structured framework for evaluating and refining your concepts, unlocking their full potential. So my friend, I urge you to adopt the Six Thinking Hats method in your own creative journey. Embrace the different perspectives and evaluate. E your ideas with honesty, creativity, and an open mind. By doing so, you'll be well on your way to developing concepts that have the power to change your life before we part ways. Let me ask you this, what actions will you take from this video? How will you implement the Six Thinking Hats method in your own creative process? Share your thoughts with me in the comments below. And remember, if you found this video valuable and it has helped you on your journey, consider giving a tip proportional to the value you received. The link to show your support can be found in the video description. Thank you for watching my friend, and until next time, keep exploring, keep refining, and keep unleashing your creative potential.